Okay, so in the last tutorial we set up a basic website. So this is what we created. And we did that by using Visual Studio. And we set up the FTP details that, that were actually defined with inside here. Okay, so that's fine if we're deploying simple websites uh, that have standard infrastructure, but often what we have is a fairly complicated infrastructure and we need to create our own virtual machines. So in this example what we'll do is we'll set up uh, IIS on a Windows 2008 server with FTP and then we'll FTP our files to it. Okay, so the first thing that we do is that we'd create our VM so we're going to go for, uh, we need to create our, our DNS as long as it's unique across the cloudapp.net then uh, then we should be okay. We'll go for a Windows 2000 server and 8 and we'll give it a password and we can go for a location, in this case it's in Asia. Okay, so it's going to take a, a while to set that up. So what we'll do is we'll go to one that's already been set up. So the key thing for us is that uh, the endpoints, by default only the remote desktop is set up as an endpoint. So it connects to port 54775 and that, that maps to a local port of this. Uh, these two ports I'll actually show in a little minute how these are actually used. But they'll be used in passive FTP. With passive FTP we open up ports on the server and obviously the firewall needs to allow these to go through. So we'll see how these are used. Just now we should be able to have a look and there will be no way that we can get into our website yet because the port hasn't been open yet. Okay, so if we go here If we go to the, it's in the cache, if we go to our IP address, then we see it's continually connecting. Okay, so we're not got, we haven't got a connection. So the first thing we'll do is we'll, we'll open up that port by adding on an endpoint, and that endpoint will be 80 on our server, and 80 locally on the VM. Okay, so we'll connect to our VM now. And we we'll do that through remote desktop. Okay, so we click here and we'll connect to our remote desktop. First thing we'll do is we'll add a role of a, of a web server and I've already installed it but when you're installing it, just go add role and then add web server IIS. Okay, so once you have IIS, you will add a role service. In this case, add FTP. So add FTP and you should be all set up We're running the web server and IIS. So we'll just check to see the web server is running. Oops. Type it in correctly. Okay, that's fine. And we'll just check to see if our FTP service is running. And it is. So we configure our FTP by going here. Okay, and then we can set up our FTP authentication. go for basic and 
So the first thing we need to do is to set up the IP address of the external site. And we do that here. Okay, so we find out what the IP address is of our site and so this will be the public address that we're using. Okay, so that gets pasted in there. <coughs> and now Passive FTP sets up uh, a range of ports that are used to connect into the, into the server. So we can define the range of these, uh, say between port 7000 and 7002, so that when they're connected we'll have to open up those ports. So what we'll do is we'll apply Okay, so that's set up our external FTP site and the ports. It's a good idea if we can we often have to stop the surface and start it again so just type those commands in there okay so to recap we've set up the web server we've set up the FTP server to be passive FTP we've set up the IP address uh, that the FTP server will be exposed with and the the ports that will be used in for passive FTP so what we'll have to do now is to open up port 20 and port 21 for FTP and also port 7000 to 7002. Okay, so we go to our endpoints. I've already set up 7000 and 7001, so I only have to set up another two here. So add an endpoint. Uh, so just to show that we can't connect just now, so I'll connect, just try it. FTP here. Okay, so there's the there's our URL. I'm going to try and connect in here, and we should not get any connection at all. Okay, so let's go and set our endpoints up. It just takes a little minute to do this and then we can set another one up. Okay, so so 7000, 7001 are going to be our ports that the passive FTP will use and we've defined them as possible ports on the FTP server. a minute to set up the port. And we can't set up another one until this one is set up. So we've got to set up 20, 21. We can do some nice load balancing if we require it. So it's 21 publicly and it's also 21 locally. <coughs> okay, so let's see if we can log in with FTP. Okay, so there and there. That's fine for the details. And there we go. Logging in, logging in, and there we go. Okay, so the thing to notice was that here, here is actually the, this is defining the IP address, and this is defining the port, which should be either 7000 or 7001. What we'll do is we'll go and set up another one. So we should be all set up now. 
there. Just copy these details. And I just open up 7002 just in case. Okay, so I, it's recommended that you open up at least 12 ports because they could all be used for data streaming. Okay, so now that I've got FTP set up, then I can set up uh, with an FTP client like this. There we go. Hopefully that's that's what we'll see. If we go to inetpub root, there we go. If I copy that, do a quick refresh. over here eventually. <coughs> okay, so that's that set up. So what we'll do now is we'll go back to our Visual Studio. Go to Publish Settings. Okay, we're using Passive Mode. just one little change there. So in our publish uh, we need to set up FTP as a protocol of course. So what we'll do now is that uh, we'll upload. Uh, so within our site we'll just, we'll just delete the files in our website just now. And then we'll publish. while we're publishing we should be able to see the files appearing that they are so they're just getting FTP'd up from our website from Visual Studio into our website So if we just find out where our website is. There we go. Uh, so that's showing how we set up uh, Microsoft Azure with a virtual instance.